Hey, Facebook friends and YouTube. I'm going to read a little bit from a book by Billy Graham. It's called Hope for the Troubled Heart. Okay, because we all have a little bit of a troubled heart. <laughs> all right, this is Many Faces of Persecution. Persecution may wear an insulting face. Insults may come as a result of a Christian's lifestyle, which should be different from that of the secular world. Peter said, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Let's face it, so many of our problems are caused by people who take advantage of us. Possibly. <clears throat> if the Bible says, thou shalt not, then there's no doubt. However, if the Bible is not explicit, then we should weigh the pros and cons and ask God to give us wisdom to do what would please him under the circumstances. Christians are being persecuted today for holding their basic beliefs. And even in the United States, they are persecuted for their stands on moral issues. If your heart is wounded by insults, know that Jesus blesses you. He said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. It's a small step from insult to injury, and one of the worst wounds we can receive or give is done with words. Hmm. I love the song by Toby Mac, Speak Life. Speak life, speak life. From the to the deadest darkest nights so we have to be careful with that <clears throat> to control our words and to not insult people yes okay snide words critical words unkind words untrue words the twin ills caused by the tongue can infect Christian and non-christians alike if a Christian makes a mistake in his life, he is more vul more vulnerable than a non-Christian. Churches have been split by gossip. Families have been broken by slander. Ministries have been destroyed by the indiscretions of a few. Christians may be slandered because they hold to their beliefs. A Christian student at a high school or college might be verbally abused because he wouldn't join his peers at a drinking or sex party. A Christian businessman might lose an account because he wouldn't take a kickback. I'm not sure what that is. I guess it's like free extra money, but it's not honest. The Christian salesman was honest in his expense account and was laughed at by his fellow salesmen. It cost in a thousand subtle ways to be a true disciple of Christ. Peter expressed it so well. They think it's strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation, like sin. And so they heap abuse on you. First Peter 4.4 4. If we are living according to what we believe, we may be falsely accused. It is not to our credit, however, if we are accused because our conduct as believers is, is bad. Jesus was falsely accused at his trial. The apostles Peter and John were falsely accused when they were brought before the council. Stephen was falsely, <clears throat> Stephen was falsely accused and lost his life. If the apostles and other early church leaders were falsely accused because of their faith, how can we expect to escape false accusation? and the hurt that such attacks can bring into our lives. Yeah, so. <sighs> Hopefully that doesn't happen to you too much, but persecution is inevitable in the Christian walk. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that we should stop being Christians, obviously. Um... Let's see. Here's a section that said, What is this thing called sin? Satan exalted himself above God and endeavored to get man to doubt the reality of God's word. If Adam and Eve had resisted the devil, he would have fled, defeated, but they didn't. This is where death began. It was a three-dimensional death. Spiritual death, separation from God, gradual physical death. As soon as we are born, we begin to die. An ultimate eternal death except for the saving mercy of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, if uh, if any of you are not saved, I will say a prayer, and you can repeat after me if you're interested. You would just say, Dear Jesus, thank you for coming and dying for my sins. <clears throat> I accept you into my heart. Please be my Lord and God. In Jesus' amen. Of course, that first part was kind of a discouragement against becoming Christian because 
yeah, it can be harder. It's easier to swim downstream is the best analogy I've heard in a sermon. It's easier if you're like a fish in a river, it's easier to go downstream than to try and swim upstream against the current. That's what the salmon do every, uh, every season when they're going to lay their eggs. They swim upstream for a really long time. So be like a salmon <laughs> and be strong enough to swim upstream. So even though, you know, it might not make you as popular and people might not understand you, there's a verse in the Bible that says the things of God are foolishness to those who are perishing. Um, so, yeah, that's just how it is, but oh well. In the end, it is better, and all of God's commands are for our own good, because whenever sin happens, it leads to death. Even if it doesn't initially, it will eventually. But of course, Satan always lies to us and tells us that any sin will bring us joy and happiness. Like, for example, my main struggle has always been shopping. And, you know, Satan's lied to me and said that'll make me happier. But it actually kind of has the opposite effect because then I'm like, dope, why did I buy that? <laughs> because, you know, when your money runs out, then it runs out and then it's sad. So it's better to just not make, not have the money run out, right? Obviously. So anyways, it's better to have self-control if you don't really need something. I mean, sometimes it's nice to have a reward for all the hard work that you might do. So just pray for wisdom about that. And that's all I'll say about that. I guess I'll sing, I'll sing a song to conclude this video. Here's my favorite song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. May God bless you all. Have a great day.